Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Being Real. I am Joe. Get used to the face. Get used to the pace because, as you know by now, we move quickly, and we do so so that we can get you quickly down the path to your own financial independence. And today we are talking about three things that house flippers must do in this market. Absolute must do's. Uh, take it from experience, folks. If you're out there flipping houses, if you've been doing it for a long time, you don't need me to tell you. But if you haven't been doing it for a long time, definitely, definitely listen up because there's some things that I guarantee will help uh, save you a lot of time, a lot of help, a lot of heartache, I should say, and um, possibly some problems later on. And as we get into the three things that you must do if you're going to be flipping houses in this market correction, we need to talk about, you know, First of all, you have to subscribe to that the market is correcting and it's correcting massively. It, it, it has to. It has to. And, and you know, there's, we've gone through this in other videos. Why? But I mean, just the facts alone that interest rates were so low for a couple of years there during the pandemic. I mean, they just got ratcheted down, ratcheted down, ratcheted down to where, I mean, honestly, they were almost zero. And what happens with that is that people start creating more and more and more debt and the debt ceiling keeps going up and up and up and up and up as well as it eventually has to come back around. It just does. You've had this inflationary cycle that we run into is, well, for an example, do you realize, this is a fact, look it up, that the U.S. government and during this pandemic and, and whatever else, and there's, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just giving you some facts here. The U.S. government has printed, actually printed more money in the past 24 months than they have 50% more, 50% more, not a little bit more, 50% more than they have in the past 24 years. That should be staggering. I mean, if you think about that, <laughs> that's a huge number, 50% more in the past 24 months than in the past 24 years. And you wonder where inflation came from? Yeah, well, <laughs> there it is. Um, I'm not saying they should have or shouldn't have. I'm just telling you the facts. And so what we have to have now in the market, the, this is a global market, by the way, and it's not just the housing market. This is an all-inclusive bubble that we have to adjust, and it's coming. So let's save the rest of that for a different video, because today we are talking about the three things you must do to survive in house flipping if you're going to continue during this correction. Because obviously, there's just those two things I just told you between the the uh, why the rates were so low for so long, which have now doubled and tripled, by the way. Six months ago, you were looking at interest rates under three. Today, you're looking at them for a house, you're looking at them over seven. That's a huge difference, folks. Huge difference in what people can afford and what they can't afford. So we have to be ready for that. And if you're going to flip houses, absolutely, absolutely 100% first thing is start padding your pro forma. If you don't know what a pro forma is, you shouldn't be flipping houses. <laughs> so as usual, any questions uh, or anything I say, sometimes I glaze over stuff pretty quick, put it in the comment section below. I will get back to you, but pad those pro formas. You absolutely have to pad the pro formas. Just have to work with bigger margins. Now, whether we like to or not, we have to, the, the restraints are going to be huge. This market fluctuation is going to be huge. We can't be working off the margins we were before. 15% is not enough to build in, uh, for P and L anymore. It's just not. You're going to have to start stretching these things out, guys because and girls. The margins have to be bigger. You have to have more of a play area because you just don't know where you're going to be on that back end. You don't know where interest rates are going to be on the back end. You don't know where values are going to be on the back end. So if we're trying to do something for a 70% uh, minus cost on a you know MOA, then actually we have to start really considering what that 70% is. What is the maximum allowable offer on the ARV? What is that real ARV? Let's be more conservative. Let's start looking at it. And don't worry about it because you're thinking, well, no, the competition is going to run you out. No, 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 no. Don't worry about that. There's actually going to be less competition because people that shouldn't have been in this game for a while will be getting out real soon. A lot of people have been making money flipping houses, having no idea what they're doing. 
because the market just keeps going up. So it's hard for them to make a mistake. You guys know this. And if you're new, you know it too. Uh, you've been living really high off the hog for a while. And now it's time to do a little bit more hard work. And that's okay. That's what we stay in the market for. That's why it's like they're cycles. And that's why we always make money. So pad the pro forma, stretch out those margins. Absolutely have to give yourself a buffer, give yourself a break. And the values. Now we're used to, we've been used to at least the past couple of years of when we go for, for resale is, is taking the value, the highest value out there and using that as your mark, because that's, you know, honestly, we've been getting it. And whatever the last highest market sold was, whatever that comp was, mark it up. The highest one was 200, you mark it at 205 and they're, they've been selling. We need to now back up a little bit and start taking real comps and taking the median price. So when you're adjusting that ARV, we we're talking about step one, let's start looking at cluster pricing. Let's start looking at cluster comps. Let's start looking at cluster values and then taking the median price of that. So instead of the highest price one, which is not realistic anymore, let's take the median price and shoot for that because you put out a good product, you go for a median price, let's say it's still at 200 and you really got stuff at 200, 195 and 190. You're going to want to be at 190. Let's say 200, 190, 180. You're going to be one out there at 190. You want to be in the middle with the best product. So adjusting these values, look at bigger and more values. Don't just take the highest one. It's not going to work anymore. It's been working for two years. It's not going to work anymore. <laughs> you want a fast sale. And we all know time is everything in this market. Everything is time in real estate investing. Get rid of it fast. Adjust it from number one by using cluster values. Cluster values. Absolutely. Absolutely have to do it. And be ready to employ multiple exit strategies. Guys, this is really, really important. Know when you're going into these projects. If you're doing number one and number two, okay, you're going to be way, way ahead of the game. You've already adjusted your margins out. You padded that pro forma. And we're starting to use realistic values you have to start employing multiple exit strategies. You have to be willing to be able to absorb these homes if you have to. So that means we need to start bringing them up because we, you know, you can put the Burr method in and all kinds of stuff, but really what you have to be looking at is can you absorb this and take it into your own portfolio and keep it and have it cash flowing and not dragging down on you? If the answer is no, then you, you need to stay away from the project. You have to have multiple exit strategies. Now you can't just be convinced that it's going to sell. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We just don't know. So until we do, does it fit in your portfolio? Come on. If we're doing everything we're supposed to do in steps one and two, it should fit in your portfolio. And if it doesn't, you shouldn't be in steps one and step two anyhow. But make sure you're willing to do that. They'd be willing to take that finance, that refi at, at 80% and set on that thing and let it cash flow for a while until the market comes back and corrects. All right. Take those three things, do those three things, start putting them into your strategies, put them into your plans. I guarantee you're going to have more success. And there's no reason to stop doing what you've been doing well. You just need to adjust a little bit. Again, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Please put us out there in the algorithm so we can help everybody out. I'm here to help you. We're not here to sell you anything. Keep on flipping. You're going to be fine. Talk to you soon.